if you're using an AI coding assistant like Ada, Continue, Cursor, or Cloud Dev, this might be a solution for you. There is a huge pain point when it comes to building big repositories with a lot of context. As soon as we have many files um, and we want to make adjustments, refactor the code with an AI coding tool, things start to get messy. And I stumbled upon this idea, which is novel and very smart and very exciting. And I think that this could be a huge breakthrough in terms of organizing repositories and making them more accessible for AI coding assistants. As you can see, this was published, I guess, yesterday. And it's a completely new repository. It was uploaded by Agentic Insights. I think the name is, his name is Baskin Kiyosan. I hope that I'm not bashing his name or his idea. He has a blog post here. And maybe we'll cover the blog post and then we will go to the repo. So basically he says, like every coding AI agent, Claude Dev, Adar, Cursor, Continue, Copilot, whatever, has the ability to, in one way or another, access our code base. Now, most context windows and projects can't load the whole code base right now. And even if they did, it's still not enough context or um, maybe the context is too long. So they don't know where exactly to put the emphasis on. At the moment, he says, he actually explains this better than I do. So let me just read this through and then show you the examples. So you could, re you could rely on the comments in the code to self-document the code. However, this leaves a lot of context about submodules library dependencies, nuanced features implementation across several libraries, etc. There was not an easy convention for this type of documentation, except for maybe having the AI read the readme at the root and give it some instructions that way. Another alternative is just providing very detailed um, system prompts or system messages. But what he proposes here is actually way smarter in my opinion. The code base context specification, CCS, recently introduced by Ingetic Insights, and released under the MIT license offers a standardized method for embedding rich contextual information within codebase, enhancing understanding for both AI and human developers alike. So basically, it's a new convention that allows developers to provide a comprehensive context about their projects in a standardized format, similar to how .env files manage environment variables and editor config files ensure consistent coding styles um, now, the key features of this is, first of all, flexibility, supports multiple file formats, Markdown, JSON, etc. Hierarchy, so it allows, allows for project-wide directory level and file-specific context, providing granular control over information. It's AI-centric, optimized for AI model consumption and interpretation, and human-readable. So how does it work? Let's move on to an example that they had here. It's right here. So, first of all, we have the file name, the conventions. Then we specify the structure of the project. So, root, here you specify the context, and here are like other files and directories. And this is how it looks like in Markdown. So first you specify the project name, the version, the description, main technologies use, convention. So use a consistent naming convention within each file name. Each function should have a single responsibility. AI prompts focus on performance optimization, suggest ways to improve error handling. This is the architecture. Main components, how does the data flow look like? Development, so a set of steps, what exactly you need to do, build command, how what is the how do you build which are you using NPM, NPX, whatever. The business requirements, so the key features, target audience, success metrics, quality assurance, so which testing frameworks are you using, performance benchmarks, and how to deploy. Here you have like a description of the project. This document provides comprehensive context for my author project, blah blah blah. The architecture overview, how exactly is the project being, like what is used, the all services, the user services, data processing services, development guides, business context, quality assurance, deployment and operations, 
So it's kind of like a readme file, but way more detailed. And obviously they have different formats, but it's not crucial. I want you to get the gist of the idea how it's supposed to be built. Now, a few more things. So context accumulates as you traverse deeper into directory stru structure. More specific context provides additional detail to broader context. AI models should consider all relevant context file, prioritizing more specific context when appropriate. And there is no strict overriding AI judges context relevance based on the query or task. So basically, as time goes by, you add, you can use the LLM, I mean, you can use the AI coding assistant to add stuff to the code based context file. And as the project evolves, you add more technologies, you add more folders. But basically, this is like a running system, system prompt. I want to say system prompt, but it's like a, it's somewhere between a readme file and a system prompt, which is constantly being updated and accumulates. Here, this is also a very cool idea. You have a context ignore file placed in the project root, which includes file or directories from context consideration. This is an example of syntax. Another thing to keep in mind is security considerations. Avoid including sensitive information, API keys, passwords in context file. This is obvious. Be cautious with proprietary algorithms or trade secrets and use git ignore to exclude sensitive context files for version control if necessary. The context docs file allows developers to specify external documentation sources that should be incorporated into the project context. This feature is particularly useful for including documentation from dependencies, libraries, or related projects. How it looks like in terms of a lo local location and naming. So here are the guidelines, file structure. Now another example. Uh, documentation, type local, path, type URL. So this is like a, a URL of an external documentation that it expects the LLM to read or the coding assistant to read. Different format. Okay, let's cover the behavior. When an AI model or related tool is processing the project context, it should fetch the inco and incorporate the, speci the specified documentation. For local files, the content should be read from the specific path. For URLs, the content sh should be fetched from the provided URL. For packages, the documentation should be fetched from the package repository or documentation site. And here are a few use cases that let's not cover them. Consideration not crucial because I want to keep it short. The conclusion is the AI context convention provides a flexible, standardized approach to enriching code bases with contextual information for AI models. By adopting this convention and including role specific information, development teams can enhance AI assistant workflows, improving code quality and development efficiency across projects of any scale or complexity. The addition of all specific guidelines and consistent naming conventions assures that AI models have access to comprehensive, relevant, and well-structured information tailored to different aspects of the software development cycle. Okay, let me summarize this. In general, as I said, there is a big pain point when it comes to using AI coding assistance these days, either continue, cursor, cloud dev. When your context is pretty big, your repository uh, has many files and it becomes a, a bit messy with many functions, variables, etc. Um, let's say you want to make an update. Sometimes the coding assistant isn't aware of all the places it needs to go and update. And the more sophisticated developers have been just adding stuff to the system prompt or just manually adjusting code um, using something like Corsair or Continue, which allows you to be very specific about adjustments to uh, code, also GitHub Copilot. But in Cloud Dev, which works in a more broader fashion, it doesn't make, I mean, based on my experience, it doesn't make only, it, it can make slight tweaks, but it doesn't allow you to do like very small autocomplete and adjustments. This can become even more messy. So this is why having um, all the context in a very standard manner can be very helpful, especially when using these AI coding assistants. So I think that it remains to be seen if people will switch to this type of format. This is very new. As I, as I showed you guys, it was just published yesterday. It's a very novel idea. I've seen many people talk about already how we can prompt 
the AI coding assistant, how we can provide more context and more specific context and better structured com uh, context for the AI assistant, coding assistant to build stuff faster and in a more accurate way. And I think this can be the answer to this or maybe a different variation. But for now, I just wanted to share with you this novel idea, which is very smart in my opinion. I highly recommend that you check this out. I'm going to leave uh, a link to this repository in the uh, video description. Kudos to the team who built uh, this solution. Very smart. I really like the idea. And I guess that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, as always, please like and subscribe. Obviously, leave a comment in the comment section with any ideas, any other solutions that you've seen that might tackle this thing of having a very big context for the, your core base. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it for today. Until next time, keep on automating.